Where do you like have your organization based? So we don't have any offices or headquarters because we don't have enough money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. A plug to please donate to Zero Hour at thisiszerohour.org. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Jules. I'm Jamie. Hi. Hi, Jamie. I'm Vanessa. It's nice to meet you. I'm Jamie. Nice to meet you. What do you do? Well, I'm a climate activist, but I'm also in high school. So. What grade? Twelfth. You? Uh, ninth. Ninth. Oof, <laughs> just you're just started. getting started. Do you have any advice for me? Because you're about to graduate, and I'm about to start high school. So. Ah uh, yes. My advice to you is to find like communities that really matter to you and like find your people. I came out of the closet as gay in high school and so I found my LGBT community. They really helped me when I was coming out to my parents and all of that. And so finding your niche, finding your community, it's more important than, you know, trying to please everyone. Yeah. Um, How did it go for you your freshman year? Well, my freshman year was interesting because my freshman year was the first year when I really got catapulted into my climate justice activism. It's about a month after the 2016 election. I was like, how many more times can I like wallow in my room and write angsty things in my journal and be like, woe is me? Because if I, I have the privilege to wallow, then that means I have the privilege to act. Yeah. What do you do in well being a climate activist? I run an organization called Zero Hour. Um, and we organize marches and protests and rallies to raise awareness and get politicians and business leaders to act on the climate crisis and get kids to know about it and get involved. That's a lot of stuff. It is a lot of stuff. You're so young to be like doing all this stuff on your own. There are a lot of kids your age and my age who are really taking action on this because it's our future and by the time you and I are old enough to be in power, yeah. you know, scientifically, there's a certain point where, where it's going to be too late to reverse the bad effects. But what things would kind of stop us from continuing our path of destruction and kind of taking a step back? So there's the scientific change that needs to happen, but then there's also the political change. So the political change that needs to happen is we need more people in office who will really stop taking, stop fun, stop taking money from the fossil fuel industry, stop associating with those corrupting industries. Is there like any um, country or any place that it's illegal to have uh, the fossil fuel? Sadly, no. There is no country in the world where um, it is illegal to pollute. That is legal in every single country in the world. I think that you, as a sixth grader, have more intelligence than most politicians currently in office. I think you would do a better job. What could I do to help climate change? So you, as a fifth grader, can actually do a lot. Um, join in like a community of other people who believe in what you believe in and, and lend your skills and talents, whatever it is that you like to do. What do you like to do? Build. You like to build? Like physically build? Yeah. Well, we need a lot of people who build things in order to solve the climate crisis. So you as a builder, show up to an organization or whatever and say, look, this is what I'm good at. How can I help? I've actually like volunteered at my zoo and they're like a big thing on climate change too. So I try to get involved. And just last summer, we've been like handing out these cards about like trying to stop your like carbon footprint. How, How do you like change your carbon footprint and make it smaller? Well, for me, you know, I'm, I'm not a person who really advocates that much for personal change. Yes, recycle. Yes, avoid plastic stuff. Yes, you know, we don't have to fly for something. It's better mm-hmm. that you don't. But that's not what's going to save us. We need a system change. And so individual actions are, they're not bad. It doesn't hurt, but it, it's not what we need. And so yeah. I don't, I'm not into guilting people about you're not eco-friendly enough. You're not good enough. But I'm all about system change yeah. and activism. How would you, like, get into doing, like, what you do? Are you on social media? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to be on social media until I was like in ninth grade, but I sound like an old lady when I say that. <laughs> okay, well then, then, no, that's good. Okay, whatever social media platform, you can always find, like follow different organizations and they will tell you when there are events and you can just show up to an event. It's kind of like how you start a sport or how you start an activity, but it's an activity or a sport that, that changes the world. Where do you like have your organization based? or? 
So we don't have any offices or headquarters because we don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. No, but seriously, we are based online. So we do like, we're all over the country and all over the world. So we do conference calls. Um, we do events together, but we'll do events in different places. So we're working on organizing voter turnout events right now for the 2020 election. And then we organized a youth climate summit in Miami this past summer. Really the power of the internet is yeah. where we're based. <laughs> Do you have any advice about, to a young person to grow political consciousness and like their own opinion? Um, listen to things at the source. So instead of someone's commentary on a candidate's speech, listen, listen to, to the this. Candidate. Yeah. And then look up what they did. Does what they did match what they say? If not. If climate change continues at this rate, how long will we have to stop it? Well, scientists say that we have roughly a little over nine years to stop it. Um, but that is not nine years to sit and wait. That's nine years to be acting. And so we're under a really, really tight time frame, and that's really scary, but we don't have until we're old. We have to change now. I saw the video of like Antarctica like melting, and that just scared the life out of me, because mm -hmm. I was like, why is this happening? Like yeah. something should be done. It is scary and that's why it's really important to have like a community of people that you can go to. Eventually if enough of you are scared together that fear turns into determination. Say I shouldn't have to feel like this. And so that's what community organizing and activism is all about. Thank you for letting me talk to you and thank you for making such an impact. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you hug? I hug. Do you hug? Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, bye bye. Hi, it's Jamie, co-founder of the organization Zero Hour. Check out my upcoming book, Youth to Power, Your Voice and How to Use It, which will serve as the ultimate guide to being a young activist. If you want to find out more, check the link in the description. I'd love to have you all get involved with the movement. Follow Zero Hour and myself on social media and let's make some change.